Go ahead and turn your Bible to Revelation 5. And then to 196 other verses. That's not a joke. Um, and I'll tell this story. I, I love telling stories like this. <clears throat> and it sort of reminds me of the one uh, the fella called me a couple of years ago, several years ago, and said that he was at the laundromat in his town, have no idea where it was, don't know who the guy was, don't know how it that got there, but he went to the laundromat in his town, and on the folding table, he sees all these DVDs. <clears throat> and somebody put on there a sign, free, take one, whatever, and um, from some guy named Mike Hoggard. And he um, was folding his laundry. He says he's a Roman Catholic. He's folding his laundry and getting ready to go. And just before he left, he looked on that table. And I don't know which one he picked, but he looked at one, looked interesting. So he put it on top of his clothes and, and uh, went, to the, went back to his apartment. And he said he went back there, put his clothes away, and put that DVD in, sat and watched it, got so excited about it, he went back to the laundromat, got all the rest of them off of the folding table, all the different ones that he could get off of there, and took them back and watched every one of them in a binge watch. And... Um, he called me and he said that he bowed down, gave his life to the Lord, got saved. Amen. Got saved, went out and bought him a big old King James Bible and uh, wanted me to know about it. And folks, I keep telling you, there is nothing more important than we can do than present the gospel of Jesus Christ because people are out there and they still need saved. And the worse they are, the more they need saving. Amen? Amen. The worse they are. Now I got you, I got a, before I tell this other story, I got a, I got a young lady I want you to pray for. Uh, like I say, we were, um, we got here, we pulled the, the RV over here Wednesday. And, um. We've been here ever since. And Thursday, um, Alicia called me and said, Dad, there's a crazy woman out here on my porch. And the cops are out here. And I said, well, get off the phone with me and record it. I want to see it. So she did. She just clicked. And, um, you know, the hospital's over here. And they have a psychiatric ward, and it, it's kind of a, like a, I guess, a drug ward as well. And we get them all the time. We, they'll, they'll walk from the hospital up to the house nearby our church and go buy drugs as soon as they get out. And uh, we've had that happen before, too. We've seen it happen. We've watched it happen. But anyway... She was paranoid, schizophrenic or something, a young lady. And she was out harassing the police out in Alicia's front yard. Um, the video that Alicia sent me, she kicked both of her shoes off at the cop. And, I mean, he could have arrested her at any time. And then she come over here. And they're calling me upstairs saying, Dad, she's here on the front porch. So I went down, and she's over here on the side by this side door. And um, I saw her, by the time I got my camera out, it was like filming Bigfoot, because she was behind that plant there. You know, couldn't really see all of her. But she started sliding down. It already had all that 
sleet everywhere, and she sat down and slid down the steps. Boom, 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 boom. And then she walked over here to this corner window and ripped the screen out of the window and threw it out in the yard. And the cop, I heard the cop say, that's it, you're going to jail, you know. And um, she had done some, I won't mention what she did, but she did some other things to provoke them. She was trying to get arrested to get a warm place to sleep tonight. And uh, that's the only thing we can figure. And it, it got, you know, they, at, they came in, asked us, we wanted to press charges. I said, all she did was take the screen out of the window, you know, and threw it across the yard. I think I did more damage to it putting it back in than she did tearing it out. So, but uh, we don't know her name. We just call her Sally if you want. And pray for, pray for Sally. She needs, she needs Jesus. Amen? Jesus can touch her just like that and all of that be gone. That's what he can do. Then, got a call. And I told this man, I said, I'm going to tell your story. He said, are you really? He, I said, yes, sir, I am. I'm going to tell your story. Every, every time I think of it, I'm going to tell your story. This man, it was, uh, was it Thursday? Yeah, it was Thursday because I, we had dealt with that and it had delayed me doing Pastor Mike online. He it tried to call here all day from England. A little town in England called Kroll, C-R-O-W-L. And he's an older man. He's in his uh, 70s. Sterling, yeah, Sterling says, ain't old. Um, but anyway, yeah. I didn't say old man, older than me. But anyway... He said, I'm going to tell you my testimony. He, he finally got a hold of me. He called all day long, trying to get a hold of me. And um, so I thought, okay, I'll talk to him. And he said, I'm going to tell you my testimony. He said, uh, I've been saved, born again. But he said, I'm going to take you back a little bit. And um, he said that back in the 70s, he got involved in the Jehovah's Witness. And for about 10 years, he was, um, he's, he's a door knocker, okay? Going around, talking, t trying to tell everybody that Jesus is not God, there's no hell, all of that nonsense. And you can imagine him trying to tell me this story. Because what he said was... Um, after all those years serving them, he said, they cast me out, disfellowshipped me, um, and he said, it was for sodomy. And I said, okay. I didn't ask him if it was true or not. I figured if he wants to tell me, he'll tell me. And so uh, right after that, he said, so I lived several years as a sodomite and just completely just forgot about God I can't remember what it was I think he started going to a church there in England probably nearby his town and uh, they led him to the Lord and he said I truly believe I was born again then and, um, and he said, I did not I did me best to serve the Lord. Uh, I'm still a single man. But he said um, that he backslid for about 15 years. And he said, during that time was the worst because he said, I even was to the point of denying the existence of God. And he said, I had a whole library full of Christian books. I gave them to the local Christian bookstore, told them they could have them, sell them whatever they wanted to do with them. And he said, I just put God out of my life. 
And he said, uh, here in, in the UK at night, you know, they show all these paranormal TV shows, ghost chasers and things like ghost hunters and so on. And he said, I would watch that every night. And he said, something just grabbed me. And he said, I got interested in UFOs as part of that. And he said, I had started looking into it, look, going to the library and reading some of the books. I said, yeah, and I read just about every one of them I get my hands on. And he said that he joined a Facebook group. Um, it, was a, it was a UFO Facebook group, research group. And he said, somebody, he said, this has been like four months ago. Somebody posted one of your videos on UFOs, you think it was? What's, are you part of a? I was, but I got out of here. They are weird. We, we, we are, oh, they're, they're mean? Yeah, we're, we're weird people. Um, but anyway, somebody posted uh, just one video on there and he watched it and he said, God brought all that scripture out. And he said, I fell on my face before the Lord. I cried before the Lord. Gave my life back to the instantly, just like that, after 15 years of I don't even believe in God, I don't think. Boom. And he said, thank you. He said, I've got me a big King James Bible now. And he said, I'm reading it every day. He said, I'm in my mid to late 70s. And he said, I have a cross to bear and I understand that. But he said, I just wanted to call you and tell you thank you for doing what you're doing. And I want to thank this church and I want to thank God above. God saves people, not churches. Amen. God just uses the churches to spread the gospel. We plant the seed. God brings the increase. Amen. You, his, name is, his first name is Paul. That's his real first name. I don't have a last name on him. He didn't give me one. But in your prayers, I want you to pray for Paul. Okay? Uh, brethren, if a man be overcome in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of meekness, considering thyself also, lest thou also be like unto him. How would you like to fall back into old sins? Amen? Anybody want to do that? No, sir. Not, a, not on your life do I want to do that. All right, Revelation chapter 5. It is about the book. It is about the book, people. I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written. Come on in, folks. Yay! A throne written in, written within and on the back side. Sealed with, actually, you guys can sit here or you can sit up here if you want to. You can actually, you can come up there and sit up there if you want. I'm so sorry. I know, we escaped. You should leave. We went to LA and turned around the same day and left. Yeah. 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 You know why Denver, Colorado is so big? It was. They're traveling this flat land all the way for hundreds of miles. They get to Denver, Colorado. They look up and they're going, I ain't climbing that. <laughs> and they stop right there. Uh, Revelation 5. I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book. A book. What is that book? This is probably the most important Doctrine, the most important thing to learn, the most important thing to teach, the most, if, in saying all of that, God said, thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. And if we're not supposed to take the name of the Lord in vain, think of now, how highly God regards His Word. We have a saying, 
A man is only good as his word is. You build yourself a reputation in life by your words. By your words. Your character comes out in your words. What's in your heart comes out in your words. Um, I always tell you, everywhere you go, be a, a disciple of Jesus Christ. Be born again. Be saved. Act like it. Act the way the Bible tells us to act. You'll get a reward in the end. Trust me. The gals down at the gas station where I stop every morning and get my big cup of whatever I feel like that day. Now I'm into Diet Dr. Pepper. Where, and I stop there every day and I talk to those people in there, talk nice to them. They smile back. We have a rapport. You know, if, if I can come up with a quick, good joke, I'll give it to them. They laugh. We just have a good time. They found out our house caught on fire. And uh, I went in there the other day to get my pop and they said, well, the next four are free because somebody's paid for them already. Oh, yeah. Um, now, if I've been a jerk going in there the last few years, you don't get no free soda. OK, you get jerked back. Amen. The book. One of the, like I said, the single most important, I think, because without the book, we wouldn't know about the blood. Without the book, we wouldn't know about the cross. Without the book, we wouldn't know about the creation. Without the book, we wouldn't know about our sinful state, the fall of man. Without the book, we wouldn't know about the second coming. Without the book, we wouldn't be warned about hell and the wrath of God. Without the book, we would not know the pleasures that God has awaiting for us in heaven one of these days. Without the book, what would we have? You would have what every other religion has, what every cult has. They make it up as they go. Whatever, whatever that cult leader or whatever that group wants out of you, they'll invent it until they get it out of you. So here's the Mormon church. Joseph Smith writing this book of Mormon saying this is another testament of Jesus Christ. But it doesn't stop there. Because then they have another book called the Pearl of Great Price. And then there's another one called the Doctrine and Covenants. These were written partly by Joseph Smith, partly by Brigham Young. And now it's still going because they have like a chief apostle and a quorum of the elders, 12 men and a chief apostle. I mean, they're mocking Jesus and the disciples. And it's nuts. And whatever, it's just like Catholicism in Salt Lake City. Because whatever that chief apostle comes up with, God, he's the prophet, God, tell, God told him to say these things. And they are as equal as this Bible is. So it's just a never-ending line of do what we say, do what we say, do what we say, and you shall be saved. Now, I'm just telling you, without the book, we're nothing. Amen? A book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. What is the sealing all about? What are the seven seals all about? Take your Bible. Let me do this very quickly. Take your Bible. Turn to Ephesians. When something is sealed... There's several reasons for it, and I actually have a whole study on this. Um, I just looked up every place in the Bible where it said seal, sealed, sealing. Uh, but primarily those two forms, seal and sealed. Uh, why would you seal something? Why would you, uh, you get food, you buy food at the store. You got you to do what to it? Preserve it. Why would you want to preserve it? So you can keep it for the future. So it'll still be around when you need it most. Say amen. amen. What did our forefathers do with hogs? 
when they didn't have no refrigerators, no ice box. They salted them. There's another way. It's, uh, uh, I think it was in like uh, Grapes of Wrath or something like that. I mean, I heard an old guy talk about it. They used to take a big barrel and they would cook down their pork, take the lard, render the lard, pour the lard in that barrel and some salt and put that pork down in there and close that lid on there. And that meat stayed good to the bottom of the barrel. No matter, no matter, it didn't matter if it's summer or winter, that meat was preserved down in that fat, in that lard with that salt down in there. And they would just dip it out and put it in a big pot and add some potatoes and carrots and they had pork stew for supper. That's, yeah, let's go eat. Come on, let's. Yeah, but it's to preserve it. It's also, it also shows authority. Okay? Our seal, whenever you and I are given a contract or a document, we put our seal on it in the form of our signature. In days when certain people couldn't write or read their name, they would simply say, make your mark. And gentlemen, people would just variously have some sort of mark that was uniquely, they, they would come up with it on their own. And that was their mark. That was their sign. That was their seal. I consent to this. This is mine. This, this has my approval. So official letters. Uh, we have a, we have a crimper seal in Rose's office. We've had it pretty much ever since we've had a church. I found it in my desk. Uh, when I became pastor, I'm going, what in the world is this? And I pulled it out and there it was. And any sort of official document, and we've had to use it before, we just take that and crimp it down like that, and that's our seal of incorporation here as a church, and that shows it's a, is an official document of this church. The kings would take wax, sealing wax, drip it on a document, if it was rolled up, they would drip it on a document and then use either a, a clay uh, cylinder seal. They would roll it on there or the king's ring. If you remember in the book of Esther, what did King Ahasuerus, when Haman came to King Ahasuerus with his plan to kill all the Jews, what did King Ahasuerus give to Haman that gave him his authority. His ring. He gave his ring to Haman. And now Haman has the royal signet in his hand. That means he can make up any document he wants. Put that seal on there. And it's as if the king himself has spoken. Did you catch that? Okay. I mean, this stuff runs deep when you start thinking about it. But look in uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. In whom ye also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were, what? Sealed. Sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Incidentally, there are seven spirits of God. I'm not done. I spent too much time telling stories. Um, but anyway, there's seven spirits of God. And those that Holy Spirit seals us to preserve us it's God giving us salvation. We don't give ourselves salvation. Amen. God seals us. He gives us that Holy Spirit of promise. The seal of the Holy Spirit shows that it has God's authority attached to it. It's got God's seal of approval on it. Four out of five dentists surveyed have approved this. 
which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of his glory. So, I mean, that's just a quick, quick teaching on why this book is sealed. But it's sealed because the, one of the main things is the contents of the book are not ready to be initiated. Uh, just from what little I know about uh, nuclear submarines, American nuclear submarines. You, if you watch, um, oh, what's that movie? Submarine movie. Yeah, Crimson Tide. You know what I'm talking about. When they have an emergency action message come in, um, two guys, I mean, this is, this is the keys to the nuclear missile stuff. Get an emergency action message come in. There is a message with a code on it and in a completely different compartment. And one officer has the key. He opens that. There is a, a verification. Okay. And it's sealed. It's in a little packet. And that man physically has to break open that seal. And when he pulls that verification code out and they match it up against the emergency action message, then they know that the message is authentic and that it's now time to enact the orders that have been sent in. Do you understand that? Okay. Let me apply this to the book of your DNA, and we're going to go through some of that later. But the book of your DNA, you had in you, written in your DNA, um, from the moment you were conceived, the time you were born, you were born as this ugly baby, okay? And you, you spent years as a child, but written into your DNA was at a certain time in your life, certain genes were going to be what's called expressed. In other words, certain actions were going to take place that had been stored up in your genetics, and it's called puberty. You start growing hair under your arms, and you start smelling worse than you ever did before. Okay? then you have to take a shower every day. And all kinds of things start changing during that time. Why didn't that happen when you were one year old, two years old? It wasn't time. So here it is written in your DNA, but it's not time yet. And some process unknown to me, all of a sudden unseals these genes. And now these genes start taking over your body and your body starts going through this change. Okay? Brother, not trying to be mean, but at one time, I'm sure you had... <laughs> right? <laughs> well, you can see through mine. So I'm well on my way here. All right? But it was already written... In your genetics, when you were a boy, the big, thick, bushy head of hair, it was already written in your genetics that at a certain age, we're going to let it go. Okay? You don't need it. How old was Uncle John when he started getting gray hair? Yeah, I got an uncle. He's still alive. He started getting gray hair when he's 16. Yeah. Anyway, that's, that's that book. This, and... The book of your DNA and this Bible, you know my teaching on that. They're 100%. They're, 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 they're the same. They're connected. What this does, your DNA does. What your DNA does, this does. And it's absolutely amazing. But this is going to be about the book. And in this church, we ought to do it by the book. Amen. Father, bless... These people today, Lord, that have showed up, Lord, I pray, dear God, that you'd bless each and every one, those that are here, those that are online. Thank you, Lord, for giving us some good weather so these visitors could come in today. 
I pray, Lord, that we could be a blessing to them. Uh, all of the people, Lord, that watch us are a blessing to us, and we thank you for it. We ask you, God, Lord, to just uh, bless this morning service, uh, bless uh, this day, Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit, uh, show us your word, show us your will today, bless our fellowship, help us to love one another, help us to love you, thank you for loving us, in Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. Amen.